Okay, very good morning to you. Hope you're doing well. It's Tuesday 27th of April and going to get you up to speed on a couple of things. As you can see here, Tesla shares were down about 2.5% aftermarket yesterday following their earnings. So I'll get you up to speed with some of the details there. Um, otherwise, we had a record close on Wall Street for the S&P 500. Uh, and in fact, seven of the 11 S&P 500 sectors were higher and that was mainly led by energy shares and just quickly moving over to the charts momentarily here energy prices wti crude futures continuing to just grind up yesterday and this morning find themselves up 64 cents at 62.55 so wti remains supportive for the time being with equities up at around these record levels both the s p and the nasdaq um, as a reminder, uh, this week is particularly busy, of course, with corporate earnings, not just Tesla. We've got the likes of Microsoft and Google, and I want to get you up to speed on what to expect from them as well. Uh, companies reporting this week constitute about 40% of the S&P 500's market capitalization running through from who are reporting from Tuesday through to Thursday of this week. Uh, and of course, not just um, MSFT and Google, we've also got Apple and Facebook this week. Uh, as well as Amazon as well, so lots to, to go at. So far, we've had a quarter of the constituents of the S&P 500 report, and by the numbers, 84% of them have exceeded expectations. And obviously, a lot of these numbers were expected to accelerate, just given the kind of removal out of the post-pandemic kind of period, but they've even exceeded those margins uh, by 84%, if we're looking at who've reported so far. Um, otherwise, just looking at the, the general sentiment this morning, and we, there's been a couple of other things to BOJ overnight, but no fireworks there. Um, otherwise, copper prices still very interesting. Sam and I commented on that yesterday. Uh, the latest little bump there just to help prices being um, a strike that's happened, a port strike in Chile, uh, and Chile particularly uh, obviously important for, for copper, given that they... Uh, account for about one third of all of the global supply of that particular industrial metal. Uh, and also as well with China, we did have industrial profit data overnight in China, which was absolutely crazy number, um, but that's just due to base effects. So I don't think you know, that's really attributable for why copper is continuing. If anything, the trend is just continuing as far as copper is concerned and the futures in copper prices, printing session high actually as I'm speaking right now. Otherwise, FX markets, and US yields, pretty quiet actually. Uh, and in fact, I'd say top right here, gold as well, is also pretty range bound. So you can see here, whether you're looking at euro top left, cable on the top, or gold on top right, and T-notes down at the bottom. Um, yesterday's session was fairly quiet, all things being equal. And then also as well, the markets are waiting a lot of big things to happen. And of course, we've got the FOMC on Wednesday. You've got that Q1 advanced GDP on Thursday. You've got major Eurozone data on Friday. You've got all those earnings I just mentioned. And so I think at the moment, the market's just in a bit of a, a pause mode, just waiting for these latest developments. And you know, not forgetting as well, we've got that American Families Plan speech coming out of Biden, a lot of focus on the capital gains tax as well at the moment. Uh, to get into so that's the overall context of things so i'd say this morning market direction is relatively neutral uh, for the time being uh, and as we look at the calendar during this briefing you'll see that there's not too much going on which does draw quite a bit of attention back to those earnings again so let's kick kick it off and let's talk about a few different things first of all um, tesla um, as you can see here after market they did uh, fall actually more than three percent at one point down about two and a half percent though uh, in the end and and what actually happened here well they reported q1 2021 adjusted eps of 93 cents analysts were expecting 79 revenues were a slight beat 10.39 billion against 10.29 billion their free cash flow also positive nearly 300 million dollars against street estimates of a negative 83 million a couple of comments that i think were quite interesting uh, the company expects this year's volume growth to exceed 50% while saying that it's on track to start production deliveries at its planned factories in Texas and Berlin this year. They delivered a record 184,800 vehicles globally in Q1. That beat market expectations, particularly strong demand from China. Um, but the company did not offer a specific estimate for vehicle deliveries for this year and that was something that a lot of people were looking for in terms of the details of how does the year plan out how confident are they about that 
Um, some other interesting points, although the, the actual nominal value is fairly insignificant overall, uh, they did actually generate 101 million US dollars in income after selling about 10% of their Bitcoin holdings. Uh, and we can have a look at the Tesla chart in a second. Um, actually, profit from Bitcoin, regulatory credits, and tax benefits contributed overall to about 25 cents to Tesla's adjusted earnings of 93 cents to give you a bit of context there about how they generate their, their general earnings. So look, let's, let, let's have a quick look at Tesla shares because overall, I'd say a loss of 2.5% for Tesla post earnings is actually pretty modest uh, and actually relatively well contained, all things being equal compared to the usual price swings that we see after earnings. Um, this is actually looking at um, Tesla shares. I mean, if we go back to where we were you know, in August or November, I think it was around that November time when um, a few months back when, when Tesla originally was getting involved in, in Bitcoin. So you can see going back to where we were trading in Bitcoin at the time, the rationale for why they made a bit of money on the back of that. But more importantly, I think is um, their Q1 earnings were just absolutely sensational. And so these numbers were a beat uh, on the top and bottom line, but it's just not enough really to, to keep what is otherwise an incredibly elevated share price. So if anything, I think these numbers were okay. It's just the fact that you know, they're, they're kind of um, subject to just how great the share price has been that you know, if it doesn't follow up with that Q1 stellar performance and really smashes it, knocks it out the park, then markets just come off a tiny bit. But as I said, for Tesla, this isn't like a normal company in terms of its daily price fluctuations that's relatively contained. And I've put a um, couple of markups here. That was when Kathy Wood's ARK Investment Fund sold uh, some of the shares that, that came at quite a technically strategic point at around 780, which was, as you can see here, there's previous areas of support we had through, <coughs> excuse me, late Jan and mid February. Um, but the rectangle here is what the indicative price is then for the market to reopen, uh, just given those aftermarket earnings. And as you can see, for me, that's within uh, the, 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 the kind of more positive side of what is quite a key technical level at around 708. They're trading about 719 in post-market trade. Uh, and the reason why I like 708 as support is because of that area of um, resistance turn support as well that it's had for the price action over the last seven, eight weeks. Um, so overall, it's worth bearing in mind that Tesla's seen a price swing from the initial Q1 earnings report of up at 900 bucks to a low that we saw at the beginning of March. We've had a 40% um, swing in price and we're about midpoint of where we are at, uh, at this point in time here for Tesla. So a bit of context, I think quite important, but overall they've survived this earnings release unscathed as far as their share price is concerned, I would say. Um, but a couple of other things to have a look at. Um, sticking with the earnings theme, we've also had HSBC come out overnight. And of course, they are listed in Hong Kong. And that's a good indicative way of looking at how their, how investors perceive their earnings. And they were up about 2.7%. So a positive reaction to their earnings release. Um, their main figure was their adjusted pre-tax profits came out at 6.39 billion. That was a firm beat on expectations of 4.3 billion on the street. Um, their uh, revenues were 13.27 billion against expected 12.68 billion. <coughs> Profit advances in all the bank's major business areas for HSBC. So keep an eye out for them when they open up on the FTSE today. Uh, there's a few other earnings. I mean, I'm filming this fairly early, so still haven't seen the numbers yet. You've got the likes of BP coming out today. Uh, you've also got Novartis, UBS as well, all coming out ahead of the open. So just to be aware of. Otherwise, other news, as I said, very briefly, Bank of Japan stands pat. Uh, they left their policy unchanged. That's very much as expected. They took an optimistic view of growth outlook while cutting its price forecasts for the year. Um, no real definable reaction, no, no great shocks here. The other comment I wanted to touch upon was in the FT. And this was talking about vaccines. And the only reason I really wanted to point this out, I don't think it's really, I'd say, important for intraday day trading strategies today. But I think from a bigger um, picture, macro environment, where we're kind of 
looking at COVID still as a significant driver and uh, this disconnect we've got at the moment from a timings point of view between developed and emerging economies and how they're currently confronting this health crisis. Uh, and in <coughs> India, of course, <coughs> excuse me, is still one of the worst hit areas. New Delhi reported the weekend infection rates still well in excess of 300,000. I mean, they're up at around 349,000 at the moment. And what was coming out in the news yesterday was that the US is under a lot of pressure because Europe has kind of committed so many vaccines to go to these types of places. The US have ordered well and above uh, the number of vaccines that are necessary in order to inoculate their own nation. Uh, and Biden's basically come out and said the US plans to share 60 million doses of AstraZeneca's COVID vaccine and India obviously going to be one of the main uh, recipients of that. So I just wanted to point it out because I do think it's important that you know, as countries like the US in the months to come get to that kind of key turning point where it's, it's kind of the vaccines have done the predominant amount of their job. But given that they've just gobbled up so much of the world's supply, you know, distribution elsewhere is going to be long term beneficial for them and others from a global perspective, given the fact that we'd want to see um, the, the COVID uh, virus um, be be kind of um, suppressed globally in order for the whole demand picture to pick up in a more equal fashion going forward. Otherwise, a quick look at the calendar for what's in store for the day ahead. It's pretty quiet, actually, for the UK European Open. Nothing really major to comment on. And actually, today, from a data point of view, it is quite quiet. You've got US Consumer Confidence coming out at 3 p.m. You've got the API all different trees um, after market as usual at 9.30 p.m. Um, so really, it's, I mean, unless you're a fixed income trader, you've got supply out Italy, Germany. You've also got the $62 billion seven-year note auction. Remember, the seven-year now, I'd say... The dust has settled. Uh, this is the third one since that kind of February shock that we had. It was a particularly bad auction. Uh, so I don't really anticipate any issues with that one today. Um, so really it comes down to earnings then. And the two big ones we're looking for, of course, are um, we will pre-market just to, to give you a run through. We've got UPS, General Electric, the uh, 3M, Eli Lilly. And then aftermarket, you've got Microsoft and Alphabet, undoubtedly the biggest ones. But you've also got people like Visa, AMD, for anyone interested in those kind of more social names. You've got Pinterest as well, which also garners some headline attention. And what can we expect from Microsoft? Um, well, a couple of analyst comments. Uh, the company says, your cloud business may modestly decelerate in the March quarter results. According to Cowan's Derek Wood, one of their main equity analysts, he expects to see an acceleration overall growth driven by improving demand for products like the office suite amid the economic recovery as well as a strong personal computer shipments that could help their windows business and, and and taking that over to google it seems to be showing sustained growth and strength in the cloud according to jeffrey's analyst brett thrill who expects part of the business to benefit from pent-up demand as the year goes on also uh, and a, an important metric to watch for, for Alphabet or for Google, he anticipates an acceleration in ad momentum. So something to keep an eye on as well when we get those numbers uh, after market. Uh, the final thing to comment on is there still is set to be uh, an OPEC meeting happening tomorrow. So front running that as usual, we get the Joint Ministerial Monitoring Committee, the JMMC meeting today. And that is going to be happening from one o'clock London time for any oil traders to keep an eye out. Uh, for again, not expecting any changes from OPEC because they just roll over the existing supply pact as it is, given the balance at the moment of the the COVID situation globally against the backdrop of a more constructive kind of outlook that we're anticipating to see with U.S. growth going to be in excess in excess possibly of six and a half percent Q1 growth that we'll see on Thursday, and that's it. So. Um, any comments at all, just let me know. Drop a, drop a comment on this video if you're watching this on YouTube, delayed. Uh, otherwise, for the guys in Amplify Live, hope that was useful and I'll see you in the chat room. All right, guys, have a good day.